Well, that's the thing. I think what Motivate have done is really good. You know, that we don't know where the Dawnbreaker is being played. And honestly, we don't even know exactly where Void Spirit is being played. You know, you might be looking, all right, we'll lean a little bit more towards Fearless. But Masteros has shown plenty of times that he's capable of playing, you know, the Void Spirit, the Storm Spirit, hell, even the Queen of Pain from the offlane. So, you know, it is very flexible still with Motivate style of draft. I feel like if Dreammaker pick up the Queen of Pain, you're totally cool with letting the Void Spirit go mid because you're just going to be able to get Radiant the Dissimulate off to dodge the Shadow Strike every single time. Dire team pick. And this, it looks like Dreammaker potentially going for a Sand King here with the Marana combo. This is something that we saw teams were putting a little bit of respect on in the second phase uh, after we saw that incredible performance from Nevermind Sand King. And with the Marana getting picked up, you now get rid of the flexibility from the Weaver. You've already got your support to it, Clock Marana. I don't believe you can flex the Marana, and we've only seen Neon try and put the Clock as a three, and we weren't as much of a fan of it. Yeah, and you know now even like they like you said they're probably angling towards this Sand King. So again, great drafting coming through from Motivate. They just say, look, you might be going for this double stun lineup. We'll just pick an Abaddon. You know, if you try and go onto a Gyrocopter, a Photic Shield, suddenly the combo is completely useless, and that'll progress even further towards the the latter stage of the team fight. So I'm really liking this Motivate Trust draft so far. Just back on the, the Dawnbreaker, I'm intrigued to hear, like, who do you think would best fit on the hero for Motivate? Because you know these boys pretty well. Like, where would you, who do you feel like just encompasses this hero and would be able to play it at a, at a perfect level at their uh, particular role? Uh, I think either Q or Masteros probably. Or honestly, Fearless as well though, right? But Fearless often likes to be the one that's starting a lot of these team fights. So, you know, not really Dawnbreaker's specialty. You know, she wants to be there with the Solar Guardian to jump in second. Silas is still in the pool. I don't think you can pick it anymore though on Dreammaker. You know, they, they already have such difficulty yeah. with uh, being able to shove out lanes. And even though it might be a great counter to an Abaddon and a, a Dawnbreaker and a Void Spirit yeah. even, it, it just doesn't fit in the draft right now. Yeah, exactly right. I was looking, I'm like, hang on, it does look pretty good, but where would you put it in the draft? Like, I don't know if you could fit in it too. You're super squishy. So Dreammaker recognizes that. They go back for the Tidehunter. Gives them some team fight prowess now as well, which they were lacking and kind of motivate also lacking in that regard. I'm still kind of thinking though, where's the damage? You know, where's the damage on Dreammaker? This yeah. will need to be like the most busted last pick of all time because... You know, not only do you have someone like the Void Spirit, who's probably going to be playing on the front lines a lot more often, who's able to, you know, dissimulate away, you're going to need to get those stun combinations perfect. You've got Nabad and backing him up, and even in a worst case scenario, you'll have that Solar Guardian to be able to get the, uh, the extra little pulses of heals off as well. So... Again, they haven't completely revealed how they're going to run this with Motivate. Remember, they don't have the last overall pick, so they're going to need to reveal before Dreammaker does. I still think, like... Honestly, Dawnbreaker, Void Spirit, and whatever the last hero pick is, can still flex in any way yeah. across both Q, Fearless, and Masteros. So it, it, it's totally out there. Like, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a Q Void Spirit either. Because remember, you're against this Clockwork, right? So if you get put into the cogs in the laning stage, assuming it's a Clockwork 5, you want some sort of way to escape from that. Dawnbreaker's going to have a Celestial Hammer. Void Spirit will have the uh, the Dissimulate for that. So I think Dyer both are perfectly team fine in the offlane as well as mid. Team I wonder if they ban the Quop here, just for the matchup for the Void Spirit to keep that flexibility. It's a hero that I pretty much, I think they banned out all the heroes. Ember, Storm, Invoker, Void's been picked. And now if you go Queen of Pain, which they Viper banned. So I guess this is, this is, uh, what do you read to the Viper ban? Because that seems like it's going to protect their loss. And in fact, they go for the Queen of Pain. So there's been flexibility. They haven't revealed anything. Yeah. They haven't revealed anything. This oh is my. great. It's, oh my. So, all right, let's have a think about this. Uh, what are you leaning into? Marana and... Ten wait, no. seconds. Clockwork and a Weaver. So, I think you're totally fine with having the Queen of Pain against Five the Clockwork as well, right? Me. Like, these are all heroes that can escape from Clockwork. These are all heroes that can go mid if the pick is not right. And, <laughs> like, how do you draft against this? It's, it's so good across the board from Motivate. Oh, if you have a weak matchup going mid, then you go Dawnbreaker Void in your side lane and put the Clop there. Mm -hmm. So what do they need? Okay, you need, they need damage. magic. Yeah, you need magic damage. Uh, Lesh, Voka gone. I'll take any damage. Sniper? Temporary okay, that's, Select your heroes. that's not bad. That's pretty good, actually. Very much doubling down on your physical damage, which I 
don't hate. It is into the Queen of Pain, so we'll see how that matchup really fares. I know the dag is a bit annoying with the refraction, of course. Yeah, but, you know, it does mean that you need to be... I, I wonder how the Sentry Ward battle is going to go in mid, right? Because Rosé can just go an early point into the meld, yeah. can dodge it out. As long as you keep it dewarded, then, you know, the lane is actually going to go pretty well for Rosé. Uh, we do know, though, with Motivate Trust, like, this is not a lineup that wants to sit back. You know, this is a aggressive team that wants to constantly be playing on your side of the map. And so I don't know if Rosé is going to have the space to be able to, you know try and get a little bit more farm. I think the the enemy triangle, the dire triangle, is going to be heavily contested with wards. That's constantly where they're going to be looking to rotate, and they're just going to try and make this TA have no game. Yeah. But they do have a lot of minus armor. So if you are looking to win a few team fights, you synergize pretty well together, they have nothing that immediately wipes away all of your physical damage, and you can take Roshan fairly well on Dreammaker. I just think that Motivate's lineup is going to be too aggressive for them to get to that point. What are the early items and levels that will enable Motivate to get aggressive? What, what do we have to look out for at the early stage of the game? And also, who's going to be that person that will be on the aggressive front and, and kind of making the shots? I think Masteros is going to get really aggressive in this game because he's always been great in the laning stage, right? So many times we've seen him, even with a what seems like a big losing matchup, he always seems to come out, you know, even towards the top of the net worth, coming at the six, seven minute mark. But I think what Motivator is going to do is that once he gets, you know, a few points, maybe not even needing his, uh, his level six, is just give up his lane a little bit more to Q that'll enable them to go for a few of these deeper dives. And as long as Q has his level six, then they should be feeling very confident, you know, doing exactly what I said, taking fights on the other side of the map while still getting a lot of farm across the board on their heroes. Well, then I guess the same question has to be asked here for, for Dream Maker, as who's their important hero. Set zero. If he hits the arrow, he's going to be in a bit of trouble, but at least he's got some backup on his high ground. So Dream Maker have to be a little bit cautious now, running up unnecessarily. Don't want to give over this early first blood, but what do we feel like for Dream Maker is the X factor for them to not get ran over? Is it the Tide having a solid laning so phase so we can kind of just that. stand guardian to these towers and and kind of block the the high ground well i think that might be a little bit tough you know it's, it's just going to be you know that you've got rose and shidori that are going to be farming very heavily you're like they are not going to be looking to take part in any kind of team fight unless it comes to them you know maybe then they can look to engage with some kind of like sonic trap maybe a meld a couple of right clicks you know throw out the swarm here and there but I think they just want to try and sit back and farm as much as possible. So it's definitely on Trezam, uh, CZY, and uh, Nevermind to try and make the aggression happen. Oh, has Felis got a sentry delivered to him? So no sentry just yet. We'll see how the, the early level comes into play here for Rosé. If he does go for the Meld, of course, if you have no detection, then you can dodge the dagger, which is something that you were bringing up in the draft, which can always be... Uh, Bit of a, a factor here. First, the Queen of Pain. Has leveled it up though. Yeah, as, yeah. as soon as you see the side blades now, Phyllis is like, okay, you know, we, we've got a free time just at early levels. We can at least har harass out a decent amount. I think Rose just wanted to guarantee, like, he didn't have the sentry, right? So he knows that, right, well, I just need to make sure I'm hitting my level two as quickly as possible. The side blades is going to be what enables that. Yeah, we're already Chidori. Taking an immense amount of damage up top. Q and Mastros, the double melee. See what the Dawnbreaker is able to do at the moment in terms of harassment. And I'm really excited to see as well for the side of Dream Maker. This is a bit different of a dynamic they've previously had in their drafts. A lot of the time, Shidori is on this late game wing condition hero. And for the side of Rose, you know, he's on kind of the playmaker, a lot of the spirits. So this could be interesting here on how they can divvy up the farm, but still top lane the Action continues as Trezam and Q just battling out, really trying to trade the resources early. I think it's going to go back and forth a lot, right? Because when you've got that battery assault available, you can't use the Starbreaker, which Q went for level one. So now that he's level two, he can maybe look to get a bit more aggressive, but it's all about finding those little timing windows, I suppose, where you can look to, you know, try and punish the enemy support as much as possible. Now, bottom lane, we see how this is going for Dream Maker at the moment. Looks like the Tide only four last hits compared to the six on Jackie. And it's very similar how both carries on either team like to be this late game 
big threat on the map. We've seen the gyrocopter still have a lot of priority, even though stacks were nerfed slightly. Chidori just okay. They've got a sentry on Q. Is he actually going to go in forward? Chidori will be okay. Now Trazam going to cut off the retreat. He's going to go up against two motivate heroes as Chidori is still playing on the back line. Shiguchi. Cautious of his health right now, but the Shiguchi, the early damage is formidable. Too much for Q to deal with and first blood will be picked up for your position one Weaver. It's pretty ballsy to make any kind of dive attempt onto a, a Weaver, right? Like, yeah. sure, he only had the one point in the Shikuchi, but he was playing defensively enough, making sure the Creep Wave was around his own tower so that he wasn't going to be punished too heavily. And yeah, they were able to turn it around. Really nicely done there by Dream Maker. Does look like, though, Jackie's still having a, a very good time here. You know, you've got Set Zero just to put the body in front of him. And he can just continue to farm. I wonder how much space Q is going to get to to find some stacks for the uh, for the gyrocopter. Did he get the snipe with rocket flare as well? How did he die? Uh, good question. I'm not sure. I only saw the first uh, first kill with the rocket flare just being used for the vision as opposed to the the damage, so that Shidori could get that first blood. Do it with flare. Phyllis at the moment is. Having a good time as well. Still has to be mentioned that Rosé is still top of the last hits. I wonder what the CS is, so net worth is looking like. And uh, yeah, he's in he fact even... ahead. Yeah. So well, Chidori's in trouble, up. actually. Top. Yeah, he's going to end up falling. This is the rotation for Chizem, who you know, tried to deny himself. So Motivate just uh, sense a, a sign of weakness at this lane with their numbers advantage. They can pressure and get a big kill on Chidori that he would just go that far away from the lane and die like you could very easily just die a lot quicker in your own jungle not give any way any of the experience you might even be able to get a stack off as well so a bit perplexing that uh, Trazam went for that play and yeah it ends up costing the weaver his life too so yeah, hopefully it won't cost them too much when we progress into the the mid game here for dream maker but you know they were already making such a good showing out of that laning stage that is ours. Do they have any stacks going up at the moment? None of the Ancients for Dyer in particular. Bottom, there is some aggression being put on, never mind. Gotta be cautious though, because CZ wide lanes a point yeah. blank arrow, and that's two levels in it, so the damage is actually uh, plenty to get the kill on the position one for Motivate. Yeah, going with a, a little bit, bit of a different build, you know, you see the, the circlet, you might think, okay, he's just going to go into the urn, the damage isn't going to ramp up too much, but then he's still got the fairy fire, he made the full magic wand, so you have a lot of stats and you're very tanky in lane. Yeah, just going for that uh, that ballsy leap forward and it paid off for him, so really nicely done there by CZY. Making another attempt on Nevermind, and this time they should be able to pick up the kill, no escape. They had the advantage once again, recognized the Mirana. It was going back by the minute mark to try and make some stacks here for the Templar Assassin. So nice awareness there from Motivate. Once again, we saw it in the top lane, then we see it down bottom. bottom is under Even just looking to get real aggressive on CZY as well. Make sure that no one's there to secure any of these last hits in the lane stage. You've been bullying him away for a couple of the, uh, the experience points there. Never mind though, he's able to get back and salvage most of it. Uh, case to follow the leader right now between Q and Trazam. Has to be a little careful now on Q though, with Trazam following him with no Celestial Hammer built up. We have seen Q as well gone for a 1 2 1 build at the moment. We oh, saw at least my main Dyer when he was playing the, the Dawnbreaker as a position 2, who is very much favoring the, the max out Celestial Hammer, then into the Luminosity. I think it's just very versatile, right? Like, you can use it to gap close, you can use it to escape, for teamfight damage, for farming potential. It's it's good at everything. This will provide. Especially the, the Starbreaker in a lane with a Weaver, right? Like, very rare that you're going to hit it, and you can't go on a clockwork while battery assault's available. Do you have... Do you, do you feel like the status quo of this game is going to ramp up maybe in the next couple of minutes once ultimate's found, or do you still think it's going to be... Uh, Dream Maker playing a lot more slow and, and motivate trying to put some pressure on the map. I mean, yeah, if it was up to Dream Maker, they'd be like, look, let's keep it slow, boys. Let's just farm and farm and farm because, you know, you've got one of the best early game farmers in the game with TA here, who's just been able to take up a, a little bit of an ancient stack there. So, Dream Maker, they're totally fine with how this is going. It's just about how motivated are going to respond to it. We've got Fearless here, who's level 7, looking to maybe take a, a small camp. I wonder if he'll look to take that before the 7 minute mark. 
And looks like he wants to stack it to give his team the highest probability of getting these key neutral items that they'll need to make any sorts of plays. We'll get the pig pole. And just one item out of that entire creep get, maybe? That'd be unlucky. Alright, he gets two. <laughs> Shimmy one, never mind, was... You just see right now, they don't have the damage in this safe lane on Motivate because Jackie's going a lot more of the farm intensive with the, the 0 1 3. There's no real magic damage to pressure, never mind. He's even got a hood completed anyway, recognizing that he still has to be pretty cautious of the damage output that the, the Queen of Pain will be outputting and also the, the Void Spirit throughout the early game. Honestly, wouldn't even surprise me. Like, he hasn't put the six point in yet. It wouldn't surprise me to see him just forego the Ravage point. Like, to just keep farming. He just wants to park himself there, constantly keep pressure on this tower. And, you know, if they look to respond to him, then sure. But that means that the TA and the Weaver are farming. Like you said, the Hood of Defiance picked up. And he hasn't got any points in the gush, which we do see a lot of uh, Tidehunters do these days. Hmm. It just it shows the mentality towards how they want to play this game right now on Dreammaker. And that's pretty surprising because often the Tide Marana lane is fearless. Gonna look to try and haste on forward underneath the T2 tower. We'll have to commit the ultimate there. He's gonna Will make sure he secures the kill because Rose swings on over, denies out the Marana, and that's a pretty big ultimate on cooldown considering I feel like the Queen of Pain is gonna be the one to control the tempo through the early game. Maria is not gonna go down. <laughs> you nearly killed it there on set zero as it went back past the tower, but. I mean, yeah, with Nevermind, of course, the Gush is so great combined with a Marana just for the easy pickoffs. But again, you're against an Abaddon, right? So it doesn't really matter if you were looking to get that off. The fact that CZY did get the kill onto the Gyrocopter is just a, a sign of fantastic gameplay coming out from him. And the last couple of times we've seen Nevermind playing this Tide Hunter, we, we've seen him go for a very aggressive build. One of them was the Radiance to help deal with the Phantom Lancer in the groups, and then another time, I believe he went for a very early Daedalus, and you know, we were speaking about it was the game where he was looking for some life steal so he could just stand his ground. So he, he doesn't mind going for the kind of uh, aggressive, greedy position 3 Tide, but at the moment, the Hood into the Aghanims looks to be the item of choice. Don't mind it again. Like you've got this minus armor draft on uh, on Dreammaker. They're actually They're looking just... to pop the ravage right. on the bot side. Sure, if you're able to get an easy kill onto the uh, <laughs> Rizan, just snipes it uh, onto the event before he's level six. Why not? You know, it's just more farm going your way. It might also mean that maybe you can make a bit of an aggressive play somewhere else. But it feels like CZY and never mind are your your playmakers right now, at least until Trazam's level six. And well, speaking of him, A, he gets that kill. B, he was just uh, soaking up a little bit of that experience in the mid lane. Masros up top's in trouble, Chidori. He's actually going to look to dive onto the top with oh, no. the remnant. Oh, Masros, he was just dangling his life, holding, holding till Fearless came. And that is a big, big kill to find. Now maybe they can look to put some of their own pressure on a tower. Yeah, for sure. But again, in the meantime, never mind. He's happy to just sit down here, farm away. You've lost your tier one tower rotary. Sure, you don't have the Ravage, but, you know, if he looked to make the rotation up top, he's got plenty of armor, he's got that Hood of Defiance, and he's even picked up that point booster. So I don't see how you kill this Tide Hunter unless you commit all of the heroes onto him. Yeah, and they recognize that. I just. I mean, what has Dawnbreaker got? She's level six at the moment. Looks like Masros has wants nothing to do with top. So this is so important for the fact that Dreammaker that they took the first tower of the game because they have a very greedy lineup. And, you know, Weaver's not really going to farm the Ancients as much, but the fact that TA is just can position herself there now and you can give Weaver the bottom lane and tie the top. It would just open up the map a little bit more for them to continue the macro game that they're playing at, at the moment. Yeah, Chidori can look to play, like, really deep, even if the lane pushes down next to the Radiant Tier 2 tower, because, you know, you're a Weaver. They don't have a ton of stuns right now on, um, on Motivate Trust, so he should be able to get away from a lot of this early aggression and really maximize the amount of farm that Dreammaker are getting out of the map. We do see that Jackie, at least, is now starting to get a little bit of catch up, thanks to the Ancients, so Dragonlance, and he's also going to be going into the Aghanims, but... Are you worried right now for Motivate that they're not being able to push the tempo? A little bit, yeah. I mean, the, the weakness of their draft was always the fact that, you know, they don't have the greatest tower taking potential and there's not a ton of stuns. Like, the versatility is great, but you need to execute it, right? And, you know, even the fact that that uh, Sonic Wave was popped in the mid lane, the deny happened so that uh, Fearless obviously expended a lot of his aggressive potential and didn't get anything for oh, it. Oh, Maseros. Hook into arrow, nice timing. 
It might be enough with the healing pulse, and Q actually committed. And this might, in fact... Hey, okay. I mean, the fact that you haven't been able to disrupt TA's farm at all is the big issue for mine. Yep. You know, Rosé hasn't been part of any kills. He doesn't care. He just wants to farm. Like, this is a dream TA game if you can just sit back and do nothing for the first 15, 18 minutes of the game. Are you kind of surprised that Rosé went for a first item blink dagger then? Uh, a little bit, but again, they don't have much in the form of stun, at least nothing that's immediate. So I guess he felt like, look, if I, if I get gone on with an astral step into a resonant pulse, blah, 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 I'll just be able to blink away as long as I've got that refraction available. And maybe he can he look to join up like he's already doing at the moment. Set zero. We'll eat the arrow. Of course, he's, he's got the ultimate at least in the arsenal at the moment. Rose, he has deep, to be cautious, though. though. Refraction still on cooldown, and he'll be condemned for how far he pushes off. His motivate, well, that is a big kill to find considering how much space Rose's been getting. And they're going to look for Trezam as well. They are lacking a little bit of control. Phyllis jumps on forward. Now, Trezam has got some heroes in the back line. Unfortunately, the arrow doesn't find the connection, but Chidori for the cleanup. So they don't have at least the control at the moment as well on Dreammaker. They've got to be cautious on how long they stick around. They've got no towers for extra TP points on the reinforcements, and it forces Chidori, Chidori well. just to end up tanking all the damage. Now, Trezam too is stuck here near the cliff spot, and, well, Phyllis picks up a double. That's all it takes is just one kill that probably shouldn't have happened with a TA diving past the tier one tower. And the, the case still was the heroes weren't revealed on the map. You know, you have pretty decent vision up right now. So he probably should have seen that you have Motivate heroes looking to group behind that tier one tower, but didn't quite recognize it in time. Motivate, they're great at punishing these, uh, you know, a little bit too aggressive moves. You know, they're the kings of making them themselves. So they know when you've gone a little bit too far. Is Masurus? He's got an ulti. Not gonna matter, Chidori. I'll claim the kill. I, I feel like Dreammaker, like we've been saying, Rose is getting a lot of farm, yes, but I believe Nevermind is arguably the strongest hero in this game at the moment, especially when Ravage is available. So the fact they made that play without Nevermind looking to connect to mid where it all started with that potential push is is gonna cost them now because the Fearless, he, he, he's got an orc completed. So maybe now the tempo can start to rise. Yeah, for sure. On the other side, though, you're very close to picking up the Aghanim Scepter on Nevermind. Like, all that time that he spent farming is going to pay off for him. I mean, Chidori wasn't at that fight either. You know, he was pushing out the mid lane. Sure, he decided to join afterwards and ended up giving his life away, unfortunately. But, you know, they, they still got a lot of impact out of the, uh, the TA death. You know, it caused a lot of rotations through. It's obviously not what you want whenever you've got a TA draft, but, you know, they made the best of it. Here we go. The Orchid reveal from Fearless combined up with Setsu. We'll get them another pick off and they've cut the net worth lead down a, a decent amount. I believe it was about 3,000 prior. Now it's only 1,000 at the moment from Dreammaker. And we've also seen that Jackie's had a lot of time to find his farm. He's just the, the Ogre Axe shy of the Aghanims. And you know, we'll see if he looks to, to dis disassemble the Dragonlance or not. Uh, I'd say that's probably going to happen yeah instantly does it he just wanted to make sure that he got full value out of it while he was taking that stack with a flat cannon so yeah Aghanim scepter now picked up for jackie he'll look to build straight back up into that dragon lance just to again maximize the efficiency make sure he's using all of his item slots and uh i mean really what, what have you got in response to it sure the tidehunters picked up his Aghanim scepter now but it's still going to be a fair way until he gets that blink dagger so i think around this level 12 timing you, know, you could have two points of the ravage if you wanted to they got to try and get aggressive and they do with a moonlight shadow being used here we're gonna group up a little bit together here but it's right underneath an observe ward and they smoke under it as well so a bit of a rookie mistake there by dream maker not to check the high ground for any sort of vision and you see Radiant, they're going to position themselves for a three-man smoke. Looking to contest around the tier one mid. This time, Nevermind will join them. Aghanim's at the ready. Motivate, they don't have all their numbers at the moment. And die have very good vision around the area. Kind of a ward down to the southern side. Confining in the tree line. They're actually looking to continue on. Maybe catch on Q, Chidori, along with CZY, but Phyllis is jumped in instantly, intercepts the Weaver. Is the burst enough? The Orca tick will find it. As Phyllis, a big rebuttal. He's looking to hunt on for more, but he's got to be cautious because Rosé, he wants to get a little bit of revenge as well. Never mind, we'll chuck out the rabbit just to hold back Motivate, but it doesn't 
clip on Fearless. So the Queen of Pain out to safety. Now the rest of Radiant recognize that the big ultimate's on cooldown. They're even going to look to buy back on Q. A solar guardian locking to and Rose has got no escape. The high ground is only home. And what a buyback as Q gets involved in a huge way. Really nicely done. That's another way to deal with a TA as well, right? All those little pulses coming through from the Solar Guardian. Make sure that you immediately rip through that uh, those refraction charges. So nicely done. I mean, it costs you a buyback, but if you're essentially getting a full team wipe and Ravage used, you're more than happy to do it. Let's see how this tower defense can still fare for Dream Maker. Never mind. I don't know if you can keep committing him. Never mind. Like he's, he's a little low. Yeah, he's a tanky boy, but. I don't think it's going to be enough to be able to dissuade Motivate Trust from continuing to push forward. Looks like they're happy enough just to get the Glyph use out of them, although Fearless has been able to use that time to full effectiveness, get back, refill his mana entirely, and he's just looking to go for another pick off here. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Either teams have incredible vision around this tier one. Dyer were very aware of that movement from Motivate just to you know sneak on forward to the top side, but they're actually going to look to jump Fearless. Nice cogs, pushes away, set zero, but... There's still the lack of control and potential burst to go through the only suns they have. Yeah, I don't think you can make that kind of move again unless you've got the Desolator up on Rose. He's only 950 gold away. He's got the double damage rune popped. Uh, sorry, bottled. So I think that's going to be around the next T timing that they're looking for. You know, wait for Nevermind to have his Ravage up again. Wait for that Desolator, and then you can look to go. You even got the Yule Scepter now and the Marana, so Fearless isn't going to be able to fully commit onto you with the Orchid. You can just immediately look to purge that off. Leap away. Dyer are scanning. And these two wards by Set Zero, though, they're getting so much information. Like the the one on the high ground in their own jungle, obviously scouted out where they were looking to move around. It meant that they could get that double pick off by Fearless, and then of course just even popping the uh, seeing the smoke happen beforehand. So, I mean, I, I, that's the sort of thing where Set Zero he used the smoke not for any sort of ganks, just to make sure that he was completely invisible Dyer's off the map and go for this warding mission. Have you seen Q's item build on the on the Dawnbreaker? It's going ags, huh? But I don't look hate what he's it. got already. The Holy Locket. Yeah. Uh, it's not good, though. Um, it only amps up your own healing that you get from Luminosity. It actually doesn't buff up the Solar Guardian unless they've hotfixed it in the meantime. Huh. Was that a bug, or...? I just know it's how things were when the patch... Uh, when, when Holy Locket was used in combination with it. Not sure if it's a bug or not, but... Yeah, game's in beta. Working as intended. Because it's healing you provide to team, right? I know, I know. Okay, okay, like, okay, okay. I'm just like, Logically, it should work. Hang on, am I like <laughs> but... not understanding this? Well, what's going on? All right, die. Yeah. They just smoked under a, the same ward again, again, by the way. And finally, zero. they're going to be able to spot it, spot it out. Although they're feeling a little... Wait, does that not actually clip it? Like, that might actually be outside of it, the sentry. Are you oh, kidding? Oh, I, I think it was. The courier just flew oh, straight over. Oh, no. Masaros. Sorry. I mean, they are pulling Rose to these potential fights, and meanwhile, Jack is just continuing to farm. He's going straight into the Satanic after you reassembled the Dragon Lance. God damn. <laughs> that is a farm gyrocopter. You can see he only put the one point into the homing missile. Oftentimes, we see people get two just to amplify their kill potential in lane, but there was just like, you know what? Full stats. This is the gyro build that I'm going for. He's very tanky. Nearly 3,000 yeah. HP at the 21-minute mark of the game. How do you kill him? He's also got 22 armor as well from the, you know, 16 Agi, the Dragon Lance. He's got 10 attributes as well from the Aghanims. He's pretty goddamn tanky. And they're pretty physical as well, so yeah. all of that armor is going to do a lot to negate the damage that they're putting out. It's not like they have any Elder Titan, they don't have a ton of magic damage as well, so yeah, Jackie's uh, pretty beefy right now. And then even, again, in a worst case scenario, you've got Q who's now level 12, and he's going to have that additional healing coming through from the Solar Guardian too. I mean, it feels like we're going to go quite to the late stage of, of this game here. I, I can't see it ending and you know, another... 12 minutes even even plus that i feel like motivate they, they've always been a team that are very content with playing as the game goes super late which is how their their long experience together can really thrive in these late game chaotic fights i wish holy locket did work with solar guardian like it just makes total sense that it would but it just it just doesn't i just have to imagine <laughs> you know? there must have been fixed i i do not He's got one point luminosity and he's going Ags too, so he's all in on the healing. 
I know, but like, the, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of pro players in their pubs I've seen try it, and it's like, sorry, it doesn't work. Huh. Or at least it didn't as of like a week ago. Uh, imagine the other benefit just... is... Oh, sorry. Another smoke Dyer's coming out. Tower, I'll, uh, I'll hold my point attack. for now as Felis bottles up a haste rune. This time around, it... W oh, it wasn't under that that observer ward in the lane, was it? I think that's... Seems like they're responding pretty well and motivate to be playing defensively around their towers. Yeah, I think that's three failed smoke ganks now from, from Dreammaker. And it's satanic. All Ooh. eyes on Roche. All eyes on Roche, Dyer. So much Binus armor. It's a way for them to kind of even out the momentum that Motivator have been building up. But the issue is, is that being on a Radiant makes it a lot easier con to control the vicinity. Now, the other benefit of the Dawnbreaker Ags is that, again, you're up against a very, very physical oriented lineup. And, you know, what is one of the other benefits Ooh. that you get added to it? 60% evasion underneath it. And you can channel it for six seconds. So you channel Oy. it for one second, but the effect keeps running for six seconds if you wanted to. CZY. That'll be right. Phyllis just completed the BKB. Satanic as well, of course, on Jackie. So a bit of item timings in regards to motivate. You see how they're looking to control the map. Mid top shoved out. Just make sure there's no opportunity for Dreammaker to contest around the pit. I don't believe Radiant have any Roche taking capabilities of their own. I think it's more just to really control the area and stop Dreammaker from getting that objective. Yeah, it's it's okay, right? Like Jackie, he's very farm, and you'll have the curse of Avernus as well, which does help things. But it's not something in my eyes that you can just attempt, like a naked Roche attempt, right? You need yeah. to get a pick off beforehand. Might be a bit difficult now fighting into that area, though. Never mind. He does have the blink completed, so this will give them a second way to start fights here from Dreammaker. They were really just relying on maybe a straight arrow, but mainly the hook shot. So. We'll see how Nevermind can get into the midst of the fights, but well, they're just going to go bro. So they're doing a, a, a decent raid already. I guess Curse of Avernus and Jackie could just you know tank up with the heals from the Abaddon and his Satanic. They've got to be cautious because they have scouted this out. Tide's a bit disconnected. You have to kill Abaddon first. Oh, Mass Ross, Actually, let's see Mass if the chain Ross, lockdown. down. Burst him down. That's okay, he's got good. buyback. He can rejoin. I feel like you might have to. This Roche fight could tell the story of the game. Is Phyllis going to jump in? BKB, Sonic Wave drop, but it's going to be cautious. An early use of the BKB. Chidori's going to use his own as well, but never mind. Still looking to rev up the Rav in front of the beautiful opportunity to drop that through the team fight as Jackie. This is a good time for it. So far on the front line here, they'll chuck up the Ravage, holding back the Abaddon. Now they can target Jackie, but instantly Q is going to rejoin the fight. The Solar Guardian healing up. Jackie's also got the Satanic and Fearless back into the fray, but all is Jackie's still not dead just yet. Rose is going to try and bring him down, but the buyback from Zero will kill Jackie alive. Five down on Dreammaker, and they can't take the fight by the pit. Oh, I, I don't think you could have asked for much of a better setup for that, right? Like, they, they did everything right on Dreammaker. They killed uh, someone that was away from the Abandoned first in Masteros, forces the buyback out from him. They made sure that the Borrowed Time was popped first before looking to commit with the Ravage. They hit the Ravage onto the Abaddon and the Gyrocopter, and they still can't take him down. He was as low as 50 HP, but, well, in Dota, when you've got someone like a, a Dawnbreaker that can provide the heals, when you've got the Abaddon who used two lives to make sure that the Gyrocopter stayed alive, that's all you need. And... Uh, that is now very, very worrying for Dreammaker. I mean, you got Ravage on cooldown for 90. So now we can see our first two tier 2 tower claimed of the game. Is this going to further open up the map and give Motivate the opportunity now to claim some of the outpost control? Hasn't, like... This hasn't even been, like, a bad game by Dreammaker. That's the thing, you know, Motivate have just been really good with their teamfighter response to it. I'm sure, of course, they would like their time again once they look back at the replays and they see where a bunch of those smokes happened. You know, who knows how the game could have turned out if that was the case. It probably would have been a pick-off into the first Roche going into their hands. So, just simple things like that. Making sure that every single time you look into smoke, you got to get those sentry wards up and available. And well, they're making a, a bit of a plan to never mind. He should be fine. Actually, they're committing the call down. See how much damage Jackie's is starting to output. They're not all grouped at the moment, of course. Q can join. Aghanim's just completed here from the Dawnbreaker. He's 
just level 15, however. But he did go for that Solar Guardian cooldown. Move we'll that caught up top. Never mind, gonna try and jump on Fearless at the moment. The Ravage still on cooldown. Now we'll turn around the choke point. It's a decent Sonic Wave knocking them back. And you see the evasion coming into play. They're just doing no damage at the moment from Dreammaker. As Rose is the next on the chopping board. CZY not looking to escape as well as Motivate. They can take the battle blow for blow. And they don't even lose anyone. That's the power of the Dawnbreaker Axe, you know. Unless they've changed it again, the Holy Locket, probably not doing all that much, but the Aghanim Scepter absolutely is this game. You just saw, like, how long he spent up in the air. Yeah. You know, all of that healing going off throughout all that time. It's, it's, it's great, you know, the evasion. It's just like a bonus, you know, you'll take the extra healing just on top of things as well because of how tanky your lineup already is being supported by an Abaddon and a Gyrocopter that's as unkillable as Jackie's. Man, I'm... Dude, what's gonna happen at TI with this hero? We're seeing how Q is playing it, and this has looked like the best play that we've seen from Dawnbreaker. Like, I know Mameng Dai, he popped off the first time we saw him. He was like 10-0 one stage, but the way that Q is providing a lot of their map control, like playing the bottom lane, shoving that out, he's never really in kill threat because he's how tanky is. I mean, 3.6 strength gain. Like, he's already got 2,800 health. How do you kill this guy? He's got an escape as well with Celestial Hammer. Dyer's you shove up waves and you have the plus one. It, it seems crazy right now. And they'll jump in. Silver's Edge is out, so the Tide's in trouble. And they even commit on four without the threat in the world. And the biggest worry was having to go up against the Ravage. And now that is a non-factor. Dawnbreaker just TPs back to base, Dyer's gets the Tome of Knowledge. It's been sitting there for the past eight and a half minutes because they've been playing this aggressive. Brings him up to level 18. So if any time he wants to look to rejoin his team fight, if uh, Dreammaker want to make it happen, probably can't without this Tidehunter. And it just means that this uh, lane of Brax is going to go down. I, I think, like Jackie, of course, he's been playing an amazing game. Same sort of thing with, uh, with Q. But, like, Masaros, he's played a very sacrificial game this time. Definitely yeah. not the style that he's most known for. You know, he always wants to be, you know, in the front lines, getting a lot of kills. But it's just been about, I guess, information providing. He's even been the one to try and break a few of these smoke attempts himself. And it's cost him his life a, a couple of times. But it's meant that Q's been able to build up a lot of this farm that he probably wouldn't have otherwise. Like, this is a position four Dawnbreaker. It's kind of why I feel like position three Dawnbreaker is the way that you need to go because... You know, as a support, you're probably not going to get the farm to have the impact that you need. So realizing that was Maceros, adjusting his gameplay, really nicely done. It has to be said as well, the fact that Q bought back at a very early stage in this game. So he did kind of sacrifice how this game potentially was going to ramp up for him. But the fact that he still found so much farm across the map and still showed a lot of impact as well. But... We're seeing, though, the, the fact that Motivate just what they can get out of this age is two full sets of barracks, a 13,000 net worth lead, and now Dream Maker scrambling to be able to come back through one team fight. That can happen with a Ravage from Tide onto multiple heroes, but it's got to be picture perfect. It would need to be perfect. I mean, in an ideal scenario, what Dream Maker are hoping for, they want to get the Scardi on the Weaver, they want to get him up to his level 20 for the extra attack damage, or hell, even the Swarm Eye Reduction, and then they need to get that Aghanim Shard on the Weaver, but you're already down two lanes of racks and Motivate, they're not giving them the time to hit their timings, they just want to keep on pushing forward. He might even survive just by using the ulti on himself. Oh, oh the Clockwork, though. But he did use it, and he can't rejoin. Motivate have to... Be cautious how long they stick now. Okay, he just got buyback, but still solar guard on cooldown. You gotta pop that um, borrowed time immediately. Yeah, they're trying with gosh. It's just not enough. You see how they can position instantly with Ravage Huge. He can purge it off and then look for another hero to be able to save. Chidori. Oh, we gotta be careful here, Chidori. He's got BKB. Oh, out. Let's see if the Scott is enough to make him tanky. He'll force out his own BKB very early on. But there we go, the borrow time force. Jackie is a bit disconnected from the team as well, or in fact, he's just pushing he's back Dreammaker. Well. They need to get some sort of damage out. Mastros will assassinate the Tired. Again, no Ravage for the fight. Rose, the next That's target it. to fall. Yeah. And with just Chidori left alive, I don't see how Dreammaker can hold this. It's going to be Mega Creeps and potentially more real estate claimed as well as they're looking to pillage the base.
Uh, I got a buyback on Tide. Clockwork as well. We've, we've come to love that a lot of the, you know, open qualified teams have stuck around for as long as possible, finding some avenue back into the game. They've got Glyph still. <laughs> and yeah, you really, you really hold that hope for this one. And yeah, uh, even CZ wise, like, you know what? We've been mega creeped. Uh, they're hitting our X. Dude, that's crazy our ravage. Maybe there's a chance. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunate. But uh, yeah, really solid performance from Motivate. Uh, I mean, Felix didn't die. Kind of surprising, you know. I, I thought he might have died a, a once or twice, but some great performance coming up from him for the early game. And again, just adjusting their their movements around and their farm priority as well. You know, they're very happy to give it over to Q if it's going to be what benefits the team as a whole. That's what I really like about them. It, it feels like they're great mates, right? So they don't have the, the same egos of being like, I need to have the most farm. I need to have the most damage. They're happy to adjust on the fly. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty nice win in the end. Yeah, it's going to give them a lot of confidence heading it as well. Now, we saw a lot of 2 zeros through the group stages. In fact, Motivate was one of those teams that did 2-0 Dreammaker. We're up to the stages where best of threes are now on the cards. Potential for the open qualifier team to force a game three, but they're going up against it at the moment with those slight couple of mistakes cost them, you know, really that fight around the T1 tower mid where TA just get got picked off. They didn't have the Tide Hunter backing them. And they also died uh, two heroes by the bottom outpost in that you know, kind of sequence of plays. And it really gave Motivate enough time to give Jackie free farm, who was also uncontested. And we just saw what Motivate was able to do with their execution through fights compared to Dream Maker. And this is going to enable them here to take game one. But when we come back, we'll find out who will be victorious in our second game.